Hey, book bitches, 2020 has been freaking crazy. So please no judgment of my simultaneous pimples and wrinkles. Thanks. Hello, how are you? I put on purple gloss and then I ate and now it's gone and I'm too lazy to reapply. So it looks like I am ill. Happy October to all of you. I'm trying my best. Excuse the lighting because I started filming at 3.52 p.m. We really out here struggling to adjust our camera. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Guest List by Lucy Foley, which was published in... There might be some squeaking throughout this video. The Guest List, which was published in uh, June of 2020, and it was the June 2020 Reese Witherspoon Book Club pick. Today I'm going to review the book without spoilers, and I want to also be talking about whether or not Lucy Foley as an author and this book are good examples of a modern day Agatha Christie. That is a phrase I keep seeing over and over again uh, with this book, and I really wanted to explore that. The duck is gonna be a feature in this. I'm sure we've all heard the name Agatha Christie before, but to give a little background information, I want to talk about who she was as a crime writer and her legacy. She's the best-selling fiction author of all time, with her books selling more than 2 billion copies worldwide. One of her books, and then there were none, which I've read uh, and I really love, <laughs> sold over 100 million copies alone, and her play The Mousetrap has the longest initial run of all time, opening up in the West End in the 1950s, 1952 to be exact, and only closing in March of 2020 because of the pandemic. This is for several reasons. One, just her novelty and her ingenuity as a writer. Two, she was a very prolific writer, meaning that she was always pumping out books. Three, also her position in society. She was an upper middle class wealthy British woman. She was educated and while this doesn't mean that her life was perfect, other barriers such as being non-white, being a non-English speaker. She came from one of the two countries that dominate publishing, Britain being one and the US being the other. She was a very talented, prolific writer. I just want to keep in mind that she didn't have to face certain barriers that other writers have had to face. First, I would like to say that I am not an expert on Agatha Christie at all. For those of you who are more knowledgeable in this field, please let me know what you've read, what you think about what you've read. I've only read maybe three or four of her books, but in my opinion, the books that I read I really enjoyed, I really loved, and I thought that they were classics. She also was a big writer of the cozy mystery and definitely did have an influence over the cozy genre popularity. You're just gonna have to deal with my child. Cozy Mystery is defined as having sex and violence occur off stage or in the past, not directly in front of the reader's eyes. It is a softer crime genre, I would say. Cozy Mysteries can occur in any country and there are many forms of cozy mysteries. I would say it was originally associated with British writers and in a British setting, partially I think due to Agatha Christie. Softer nature, I think it was more palatable or it was more acceptable for readers in Britain in the 1900s particularly the upper class nobility as the cozy mysteries or Agatha Christie's cozy mysteries oftentimes took place in a manor house on a hunting weekend in the countryside those are very aristocratic British traditions though sex and violence occurs off stage I was sort of surprised to find in the Agatha Christie novels I read these topics were discussed these topics do happen there is a lot of shame and loss and pain in these stories it's just the delivery of these topics topics or the way that they are expressed is done so in a less full frontal manner, less in your face. Lastly, I would also associate cozy mysteries with the detective or those investigating motivated by logic or using logic to discover who the killer is. And the murder is very much viewed as a puzzle. If you think of a cozy as solving a crime in a logical way as if it were a puzzle and that's on one end of the spectrum then I would say American Hard Boiled is on the other end of the spectrum which often includes extreme physicality, lots of sex and violence that's not hidden away. Also a detective or those investigating motivated by either emotions or money or something a little bit more in your guts whereas cozy mystery is very much crime of the mind. I don't think that one genre is more intelligent than 
another. It really just comes down to what you prefer. What I think separated Agatha Christie from other cozy writers or from those who have come is that she's popularized the idea of a group of people being in an isolated setting in which there's a murder. The reader and other characters realize that the killer is among them. In this type of story, there's a set few number of suspects and they all have a motivation and they all have a secret that they are trying to hide. That secret is oftentimes what makes their activity suspicious and makes them a suspect in the first place. On to Lucy Foley and the guest list. Now, this is Lucy Foley's second novel. Her first novel was The Hunting Party. Now, I have not read The Hunting Party, but I really like her, so I might actually pick that novel up after I film this. If you have read The Hunting Party, comment down below if you liked it or not. Let me know your thoughts. The guest list is about a group of people who come to a isolated island off of Ireland for a wedding. And the story is told through multiple POVs, though there are a few POVs that dominate the narrative space. So you have the voice of the bride, you have the voice of the bridesmaid, who's the bride's sister, you have the wedding planner, the best man, and you have the voice of a plus one. The story is also told through a dual timeline where we're on the wedding night when something bad has happened and two days leading up to the actual wedding. I felt that the characters were distinct enough where I could tell the difference. I know it sounds like a lot of POVs to keep track of, but for me, all of the characters have distinct personalities, distinct tones, and also their internal headspace was different enough. Plus each chapter begins with name of the character. Now, that being said, I did listen to this book and in listening to this book, they used different actors for the different voices, which gave me such an interesting experience. I really enjoyed that. But I'd also be curious to know if those of you who have read it, how was your experience with that? Were you able to tell the characters apart? I wanna go into first what I liked about the book and then I wanna go into what I struggled with as a reader. And again, I'm not gonna give any spoilers away. I thought it was very well written. It was very atmospheric, it was spooky, it was moody. I thought she did a great job building the world that this took place in. While these characters are all very flawed, I felt like I saw myself a little bit in each of these characters. And I really liked that she sort of gave each of them different types of motivations. Certain characters were uh, driven by jealousy or social anxiety. I thought this novel was very suspenseful, though I would probably classify it more as a mystery than a suspense. No, no, no. In terms of the plotting, there was one twist that I sort of saw coming, but I loved it. I'm so glad she went in that direction. I don't think it was necessarily predictable, but if you're sort of a more active reader, then you could probably piece it together, but it's still a shock when it comes, and I think it's like a very great twist. Now, following that big twist that I thought was gonna happen, there were two more twists that I did not see coming until either that page or the paragraph before it's revealed, you know, right before. I really liked that. I liked that she threw me off. I liked that she fooled me. I do kind of want to talk about the, the twists as maybe one of the reasons why I wouldn't give this book a full 10 out of 10 or 9 out of 10. And that's because there were probably like three big twists and with each big twist, they sort of got less and less believable now she justifies them I think in the story in a pretty good way for why we would have the coincidences like one after another however I just found because there were like three or four big twists the redundancy of those twists they sort of got a little less believable and a little less powerful with each one if you have only like one or two twists they seem more dramatic because there are less of them if you are someone who likes when the plot is really tight and neat like that then you'd love it. My personal preference, I like it when the plot's a little bit messy, and by that I don't mean plot holes, I just mean if certain things don't work out perfectly. Another thing I wanted to say was that at the very, very end of the book, it was a bit anticlimactic, like the last chapter or so. That's sort of a trend I've been noticing lately in commercial novels, which I think they're borrowing from like this literary trend that started in the 80s of doing anticlimactic endings. I don't mean that it's an unhappy ending. What I mean is that the author chooses to sidestep tension and conflict. Hi, baby! Where it's very obvious to me that they could have jumped on that. Con oh, golden hour. <laughs> oh, let me go back in the shade because that's hurting my eyes where there is obvious conflict and obvious tension that they could have enacted upon and then chose not to. Lisa Jewell, who I absolutely love, her book, Then She Was Gone, 
great read kind of did the same thing where they set up the ending to be very climactic and to have lots of tension and lots of conflict and then they sort of sidestep it I think to be viewed as a more serious writer I'm not sure that's a whole other video regardless even though I thought the ending could have been more dramatic and lent itself to being dramatic I still thought it was a great read overall I'm very glad I read it I really enjoyed it in terms of her being a modernized Agatha Christie, I definitely see that. Not only does she set up the story the way, for example, And Then There Were None is set up, where a group of people come together on an island, an isolated setting, and you know that there is a set number of suspects. All of them have a motivation, all of them have a secret. She's got all those elements going for her, and I really did like that. What she does do that modernizes it is that, one, the sex and the violence is more obvious, which, granted, some people might say, it's not a cozy then but I would say it could be more of just like the cozy developing with our society as sex and violence has become more acceptable another thing that she did to modernize which I thought was really good was that the secrets that she had each person try to harbor were more relevant in our contemporary society now that being said the ones that Agatha Christie used had high stakes in her society for example there was always some bastard child somewhere you know in the 1920s and the status symbol of that and just you know sex outside of marriage all those things so I think for Agatha Christie's time those secrets were very shocking and nowadays they wouldn't be and the thing that I really like that Lucy Foley did was she chose secrets that I thought were equally shocking or sad or taboo in their own way for today's society she still drew on themes of love and loss and pain and trauma just as Agatha Christie did there are other writers nowadays that are called the modern-day Agatha Christie Christie. I think that that is a sort of phrase used for anyone who has a murder take place in an isolated setting with a limited group of people slash also cozy mysteries in general. I might not be as well educated as some of you guys. If there are modern day Agatha Christie writers that you like to follow, comment them down below. To me it felt like an Agatha Christie novel but a bit edgier, a bit darker, a bit more modern, a bit more relevant to today. There's lots of secrets that surround issues of social social media, women's rights, abuse, self-harm, that kind of thing. And while I don't think these topics are necessarily as taboo as they may have even been 10 years ago, even five years ago, I think that Lucy Foley does a good job of picking experiences for the characters, something just so painful you can't speak about, or it's so painful and shameful. That feeling of shame and that shame driving that experience underground and into becoming a secret in the first place is what I think Agatha Christie characters share with Lucy Foley's characters. There is one author I have read and I've actually reviewed in my Scottish Noir video, which I'll link up above, which is Ruth Ware. I've seen that some people say that Ruth Ware is sort of like a modern day Agatha Christie, particularly her novel, The Woman in Cabin 10. Now I haven't read The Woman in Cabin 10, but I have read her Turn of the Key. And I understand that the premise of Woman in Cabin 10 is a lot more like Agatha Christie than Turn of the Key. For example, Woman in Cabin and 10, it's about a woman who witnesses a murder aboard a cruise ship. However, when it comes to her writing, I feel that the multiple POVs and multiple characters and the secrets of those characters in Lucy Foley's The Guest List is really what makes it for me a modern day Agatha Christie versus just the bare minimum of being a murder in an isolated place. And also class dynamics. Uh, in Murder of Roger Ackroyd, there are characters who are very involved and who are suspects that are of different classes. And in The Guest List, there also was that question of class. I think that a wedding lends itself really well to exploring that theme because not everyone can afford to have the type of wedding all these people are attending or they can't afford a gift registry. Overall, I actually really liked this book. I thought it was really suspenseful. I thought it was well written. I thought the characters were interesting. A lot of them had relatable qualities while still being flawed and I think that that is a more modern view of characters. One thing I forgot to say is, first of all, check out my makeup. And second of all, the other thing I wanted to say was I would rate this book 8.5 out of 10. I had a great time reading it. I got through it very quickly. Yes, I was listening to it on Audible, but I kept increasing the speed because I was very interested. I thought it was suspenseful. I liked all the characters, though I thought there were some things that were a little unbelievable or less organic towards the end of the story as the plot went on. Give it 8.5 overall. It was a great experience. And I think if you are a lover of crime fiction, you should definitely check out this book. 
I don't have my pretty face on anymore, but I just wanted to say I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you like these slightly in-depth reviews of one novel and some background information along with those views. Love to hear your thoughts. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel to enjoy more content like this. Thanks!